So in that sense, business to me is bottom of the barrel. There's no actual skill called business. It's too generic of a thing. It's like a skill called relating, like relating to humans. That's not a skill. It's too broad. So a lot of what goes on in business schools, and there's some very intelligent stuff taught in business schools. I don't mean to detract from them completely. But some of the stuff that's taught in business school is essentially just anecdotes. They call it case studies, but it's just anecdotes. And they're trying to help you pattern match by throwing lots of data points at you. But the reality is you'll never understand them fully until you're actually in that position yourself. Even then, you will find that basic concepts from game theory and psychology and ethics and mathematics and computers and logic will serve you much, much better. So I would focus on the foundations. I would focus with a science bent. I would develop a love for reading, including by reading so-called junk food that you're not supposed to read. You don't have to read the classics. That is the foundation for your self-education. What did you mean when you said that doing is faster than watching? When it comes to your learning curve, if you want to optimize your learning curve, one of the reasons why I don't love podcasts, even though I'm a generator of podcasts, is that I like to consume my information very quickly. And now I'm a good reader, a fast reader, and I can read very fast, but I can only listen at a certain speed. I know people listen to 2x, 3x, but everyone sounds like a chipmunk. And it's hard to go back. It's hard to highlight. It's hard to pinpoint snippets and save them in your notebook and so on. Similarly, a lot of people think they can become really skilled at something by watching others do it, or even by reading about others doing it. And going back to business school case study, that's a classic example. You know, they study other people's businesses. But in reality, you're going to learn a lot more about running a business by operating your own lemonade stand or equivalent or even opening a little retail store down the street. That is how you're going to learn on the job because a lot of the subtleties don't express themselves until you're actually running the business. For example, everyone's now into mental models these days, right? You go to Farnham Street, you go to Port Charlie's Almanac, and you can learn all the different mental models. But which ones matter more? Which ones do you apply more often? Which ones matter in which circumstances? That's actually the hard part. For example, my personal learning has been that the principal agent problem drives so much in this world. It's an incentives problem. You know, I've learned that tit for tat, iterated prisoner's dilemma, is the piece of game theory that is worth knowing the most. You can literally almost put down the game theory book after that. By the way, the best way to learn game theory is to play lots of games. I never even read game theory books. I consider myself extremely good at game theory. I've never opened up a game theory book and found a result in there where I was like, oh yeah, that's common sense to me. Because the reason is I just grew up playing all kinds of games and I ran into all kinds of corner cases with all kinds of friends. And so it's just second nature to me. So you can always learn better by doing on the job. But the doing is a subtle thing that we're doing encapsulates a lot. So for example, let's say I want to learn how to run a business. Well, if I start a business where I go in every day and I'm doing the same thing, let's say I'm running the retail store down the street where I'm stocking the shelves with food and liquor every single day, I'm not going to learn that much because I'm repeating things a lot. So I'm putting in thousands of hours but there are thousands of hours doing the same thing. Whereas if I was putting in thousands of iterations, that would be different. So the learning curve is across iterations. So if I was trying new marketing experiments in the store all the time, I was constantly changing out the inventory. I was constantly changing out the branding and the messaging. I was constantly changing the sign. I was constantly changing the online channels that I was used to drive foot traffic in. I was experimenting with being open at different hours. If I even had the ability to walk around and talk to other store owners and get in their books and figure out how they're running their business. It's the number of iterations that drives a learning curve. So the more iterations you can have, the more shots on goal you can have, the faster you're going to learn. It's not just about the hours put in. It's actually a combination of the two. But I think just the way we're built and the way that the world presents itself, the world offers us very easily the opportunity to do the same thing over and over and over again. But really, we'd be better served if we went off and found ways to do new things from scratch. And doing something new the first time is painful because you're wandering into uncertain territory and high odds are that you will fail. So you just have to get very, very comfortable with frequent small failures. You know, Nassim Taleb talks about this also. He made his fortune, his wealth, by being a trader who relied upon black swans. Nassim Taleb made money by essentially losing little bits of money every day. And then once in a blue moon, he would make a lot of money when the unthinkable happened for other people. Whereas most people want to make little bits of money every day. And in exchange, they'll tolerate lots of blow up risk. They'll tolerate going completely bankrupt. We're not evolved to bleed a little bit every day. 
if you're out in the natural environment and you get a cut and you're literally bleeding a little bit every day, you will eventually die. You have to stop that cut. We're evolved for small victories all the time, but that becomes very expensive. That's where the crowd is. That's where the herd is. So if you're willing to bleed a little bit every day, but in exchange, you'll win big later, you'll do better. That is, by the way, entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurs bleed every day. They're not making money. They're losing money. They're constantly stressed out. All the responsibilities upon them, but when they win, they win big. On average, they'll make more. 